Continuing on to postulate three, we have for the third postulate of quantum mechanics that any measurement of a property A, so A is some physical property that we can measure like position, momentum, energy. For this property A, the only values, whenever we measure it, the only values we will observe are eigenvalues of the corresponding quantum mechanical operator for A. So these eigenvalues, there's going to be a set of those eigenvalues which are possible. And these are going to obey some eigenvalue equation where A act acting on the wave function, the operator, the quantum mechanical operator for that physical observable acting on the wave function is going to equal some eigenvalue times the wave function again. So there's going to be a discrete set of these eigenvalues which are possible and these are the only possible values you can observe whenever you measure a, a property. So just to say that again, we have this set of wave functions. <clears throat> there's going to be, there can be many of them in principle and those are all eigenfunctions of A, of operator A. And for particle in a box, what we saw was uh, there were an infinite number of solutions, and this n was a quantum number. And as this n increased, the uh, number of sine waves was increasing, and the energy was increasing as it was going up. So, if a was energy, and and the operator was the Hamiltonian operator for total energy, um, then we would have uh, this set of wave functions, our eigenfunctions of that Hamiltonian. And that was how we solved the Schrodinger equation by solving for the eigenvalue problem where this operator was H, the Hamiltonian operator. And then we have <coughs> these set of eigenvalues A of N. And those eigenvalues are going to be the only possibilities for what we can measure. And we're going to see an important distinction in a little bit about the difference between the eigenvalues, what you measure, and expectation values, or the average value of, of a large number of measurements. So just because uh, something is an expectation value for an operator does not mean that you can observe that number in an experiment. That number has to be an eigenvalue. It has to satisfy one of these equations for a given state, depending on uh, whatever quantum numbers you have. So this is an eigenvalue of A. And as we said, these are the only values of A which can be measured. To be measured. Now, this is pretty straightforward. If we have our total wave function, psi, and it just equals one of these eigenvalue, one of these eigenfunctions, then it's rather straightforward. We're we're going to get, then we're going to measure a sub n for that specific eigenstate, and that's going to be the only possible value that you can measure. So every state we were talking about for particle in a box, those were all eigenstates, and for each of those eigen for each of those eigenstates, each of those eigenfunctions, you can only measure one specific energy if your total wave function is is 100% uh, that eigenfunction. Then, if that's not the case, things will be slightly more complicated. If your wave function is not an eigenfunction of whatever operator you're trying to measure the property for, then you could measure several different values for what that what that property could be. It's just going to depend on how this wave function ends up being described, what what kind of terms it has in it. So we're going to have more to come on this later. Uh, we've only thus far seen wave functions which are eigenfunctions of operators which we are calculating expectation values for. 
so uh, in the in the future what we're going to see is in general the wave function can be a linear combination of these individual eigenfunctions that it can be some coefficient that our psi is going to be able to look like something like a sum across all of the possible wave functions say ci psi i and we'll see uh, the, the consequences for that both for uh, what the measurement of a property is and what its expectation value is.